All right, guys, GoodBoy32 here, check it out. So this is probably one of the videos that I'm most excited about. We just finished up doing a receiver, and in order to finish this whole thing and seat the barrel, I uh, one, I had to check for the go-no-go -no -go gauge or the head spacing, and I developed a pretty unique little method of doing that. Uh, but uh, it's not something that I really want to go over. Uh, there are some the right ways and the wrong ways, and then there's some ways that just, you know, they kind of work, but they're probably not the best way. Uh, but in any case, we did achieve a good head spacing, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy out of the box here in a few seconds. This is the Proof Research. This is their stainless steel 1 and 8 twist 416R steel. We're going to take a look at this guy, and then we're going to do a cross comparison with this little booger right here. This is Palmetto State Armory's uh, version of the 6.5 Creedmoor. Then what I want to do is I'm going to show you the differences between what a, a hand lap barrel looks like, and, and then I got this. Now, the last time I did this, we did a, a comparison between the Bear Creek Arsenal barrel and a proof barrel. And I was using the Endo Snake, which did a pretty decent job. But now I have this guy right here. This is a endoscope made by a company called Teslong. And it's got a five-prong deal here, and I can actually record the video via my computer. And I'm gonna tell you something, man. Uh, one of the deals it also has is this 90 degree mirror on here. So what we're able to do is we can actually see the outside of the barrel, the round, and then we can actually see a front, a direct look at the lands. I <laughs> got that right this time, and the groove. And not only that, but you can actually come in here, you can see the crown where it's cut right here. This is really cool. And you'll be able to see the biggest difference between this guy right here, uh, where it probably needs to be, go through a thorough cleaning and decopper and defouling, because uh, you'll see the burnt notices in there. But in any case, one of the things let's do, let's go over this proof barrel, because I am seriously excited about putting it in this guy and going and getting the process started. Look at that. Now, I did have a couple of the uh, cam pans laying around, so we were able to take advantage of that. But I honestly cannot wait to go through this thing. And then I'm going to try to put this whole series out in one week so you can see exactly what we're talking about. But now we're going to be doing the uh, buffer spring system. We're talking about the stock we're going to be using. And I actually went ahead and put the whole lower together, the receiver, so we can do a comparison side by side with the PSA. So in any case, let's go ahead and put this away and open it up. So this is a proof barrel, proof research barrel. This guy was sent to the channel by the guys over there at Optics Planet. Please, if you were interested in buying anything off the Optics Planet, uh, you save 5% by using the discount code KB32TAC.com. Now, I don't get any money out of it, but what it does is that, you know, we help advertise through the company, and they send some stuff out in order to support the channel. And I told those guys that I was getting ready to try to build a the baddest what Creedzilla there was, and they wanted to participate, and this, this is what we got, plus the handguard. So anyway, without further ado, this is the proof barrel. This is their stainless steel version. Now, the reason I went with a full-blown stainless steel version is I don't want to mess with the carbon fiber stuff. Now, I know a lot of people say the carbon fiber helps it stay. Uh, the point of impact won't shift or anything if it, once it's heated up. And I said, that's fine, but that's a real expensive barrel. But you can get this guy right here. Uh, this is their stainless steel version for around $479. Now, a lot of guys, you're going to uh, balk at this whole thing because you can buy a whole rifle for that same price. But this particular rifle, ladies and gentlemen, was meant to be an all-out bad-to-the-bone rifle. Now, this is pretty cool. With a 24-inch system, it comes with a what they call their cam gas system. So in other words, the you actually do get their... What do you call this thing? <laughs> this is their gas tube. And what it is is it's a rifle length plus 2 inches. And what Proof Research has developed is... Let me see here. Do I have a rifle length gas system laying around here somewhere? I'm not offhand. But anyway, uh, what it is, is they've developed an idea saying that this you're able to achieve a softer, more reliable uh, cycling through the extra additional two inches, especially when it comes to a 24 inch long uh, barrel. So what I want to do, uh, let's take this thing out. We'll go ahead and take a look at it. So you can see right there. Let's see if I make sure that thing comes into focus. Man, it's awesome. Stand by. All right, so the box comes just like this. You got some really cool protection. And on my last proof research barrel, I did not get a sticker. 
And I guess they decided to make up for that by sending me two stickers. <laughs> so in any case, we'll go ahead and put one of these on the refrigerator behind me, and I might even put one of these on my car. I don't know. Looks pretty cool. So uh, if you're not familiar with these guys, they're out of uh, Montana. They're completely American-made design and everything else. And that's one of the reasons why I like them. Now, let me just preface this whole thing by saying I just finished a... A uh, complete tour of DC Machine, and that's the company that makes the or manufactures the barrels for Palmetto State Armor. So I was able to learn a good deal about the differences in the Marion manufacturing process, the quality control, things of all that, and I was thoroughly impressed. As a matter of fact, they left me thinking that there's no doubt in my mind that in the, the number of barrels that they manufacture on an hourly basis, the quality control, the checks and balances are absolutely amazing. Uh, as a matter of fact, they have a 75-yard range at the manufacturer so that any point in time that they can test a barrel, they can just walk up, grab one, and start testing the barrels for accuracy. The, compre the pressure testing was amazing. Uh, how they track the machining differences, if they start seeing shifts in machining. It, it's just, it was a really, really cool and informative experience for me because I've never seen the whole process, but it was really cool. And I saw these guys right here being manufactured. This is the 6.5 Creedmoor. And if you look at these guys side by side, they really don't look a whole lot different. And really and truly, one of the biggest differences is the, the process. Now, there's a button rifle. And I was actually able to see and, and watch how that whole process happens. I, I can't remember what the proof is, if it's a cut barrel or not. One, if you guys know, please let me know. But what we're going to do is I'm going to take a look at the interiors of these barrels to let you see what the difference is between a drilled barrel that has been button finished as when a barrel like the proof barrel that's been hand lapped. All right, so one of the things we're going to do is I'm going to use this test long boroscope with a side 40, uh, 90 degree mirror on it. And this thing is really, really nice. It's a little bit thicker. It gives you a little bit more strength uh, forward and aft. But the nice thing is, is that it literally, uh, it, it'll do through anything from a 5.56 five, up to whatever you want. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take a look at this guy first. This is the, the Palmetto State Armory barrel. So this guy right here, I've got a bunch of rounds through it. Uh, but And I did take the liberty of going ahead and running a cloth, uh, a, a little cleaning cloth through it just to get the dirt out of it. But take a look at this. And the nice thing about this borescope is that I can put the record button on it and I can show you guys exactly what we're looking at. Now, the differences between these two barrels, one is drilled and button cut. This guy right here is drilled, it is cut, and then it is hand lapped. Now, Look at the different, well, I'll show you. This is the Palmetto State Armor. You can see the grooves where it's been cut, and there's the lens right there. The, having the 90-degree mirror on this guy really does give it, give us the ability, what is that thing? Where the hell did that come from? What is that? Well, anyway, as we move forward, you can see. Now, the cool thing is we'll get out here, and you're going to see a copper buildup, and then we're going to see some fouling. And we're getting to it. And I mean, literally, it looks like a, a stainless steel pan that has been burnt with butter. So we'll go on here. I sent one of my good friends, uh, Ray uh, X-Ring, a picture of this. And he was, I was like, do you think this thing needs to be uh, de defouled? And he was like, oh, yes, there it is. Check that out. So big caked on areas where it's been copper, it's just been burnt up. And it's just right there in that area right there. So moving forward, you can see some more areas. But that's what a uh, drilled and button uh, cut looks like, our button barrel. But pretty neat process. I spent uh, several hours watching this whole event from one end to the other. But, yeah, we're going to have to do some uh, cleaning out on this thing. I'm going to use a new product. Well, it's not new. It's been out, uh, Modern Spartan Systems. And we're going to defoul this thing and decopper it and clean it out. Let's see if we can't locate the uh, gas block. Now see, there's the end of the barrel right there. Isn't that absolutely cool? You can see the raised area. There's the where that light is hidden. That's the land. There's the grooves. Let's see here. 
All right, so we should be real close. There it is. So there is the gas port. You can see the lights up above. And how nasty that thing is. Boy, we really need to clean that thing off, don't we? But what you're doing is you're trying to get some copper to fill up those cracks. And I'll show you exactly what we're talking about here in a second. But in any case, you can see how me eat up this thing is. We do need to give it some good cleaning. All right, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and I'm going to show you the proof barrel. Right here it is. I'm going to stick this thing in there. There we go. Now, this barrel has, of course, never been fired, but I'm going to show you something. So there's the lands right there. That's a land. That's the groove. And the hand lap, you can see the cuts are going length of the barrel, not across the, the barrel. But look at those things. Isn't that beautiful? And what will happen is, once we see, you can see some of the little pits, there we go. What will happen is once we shoot, and while we're in the process of breaking this barrel in, and yeah, we will do a break-in process, these little areas right here will get filled in with copper, which creates a perfect smooth surface. But see that whole area on the right-hand side, that's your twist rate. One and eight. But look at that. And this is this is to the microscopic part. All right, so let's go ahead and bring it out. I'm going to show you the end of the barrel. There you go. Let's make sure my lighting is all the way up. Isn't that cool looking? How they cut that. But there's the end of the landing, as you can see. Let's go ahead and bring it back to the gas port. I'm going to show you what the gas port looks in this guy. So the gas port should be right about there somewhere. Hold on. We're getting there. Let me do that one more time. I'm upside down. Here we go. What was that? Nope. That's no gas port, but that's a big pit in that. Look at that. We'll find it here in a minute. There it is. Look at how nice that is. And you can see the grooves from where it was drilled out in, as well. Really nice barrel. But look at those lands. Not landings, but lands. Anyhow, let's go ahead and get rid of this. This is the Test Long uh, Boroscope. Very nicely done, guys. Appreciate that because I did lose my endoscope. I don't know where that thing went off to. But that's it. This is really cool. You can see from the barrel extension. Go ahead and take a look at the interior. Look at that bad boy. Absolutely gorgeous. Clean as a button. There's the proof. 6.5 Creedmoor. 1 and 8 twist. There's the exterior of the gas port. As you can see, the little uh, pin right there for your gas block. There's the muzzle. Not bad. Guys, if you have any questions concerning either one of these barrels, I'm going to tell you something. I, I've had it, even though that this is a button barrel and, and you can see the drill marks in it, I've been no problem hammering targets out to a mile with this rifle and this barrel. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what this guy right here can do at the end of the day. Uh, and again, a lot of people will balk at the cost of something like this, but when you're building a high-end rifle, Cost is not something that we're really too concerned about when it comes to stuff like this. Uh, oh, well, yeah, we are. But in any case, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed that the endoscope thing that we just did. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, this is, what, part five, part six? Being that, we'll end it like this. God bless America. God bless those men, women in uniform, 24-7 for our freedom. Because freedom's not free. It's Code War 32. I am out.